you actually have to remove these two nuts. Now you can lift up this engine cover and uh, you can either pull it off the back there or just flip it up and leave it. But either way, set that aside. Now that the cover's off, I have access to everything. So I'm going to start with disconnecting these two clamps for the air filter housing. Remove this and just set it aside right over there. I'm going to disconnect my mass airflow sensor connector. And it's going to have to pop out of here. There we go. I also have to disconnect this harness right here. Pop it out of there, perfect. Next I'm going to loosen up this clamp here with my 10 millimeter. There we go, just enough so this can be free. And now I'm going to disconnect this bolt here. Take that out. And there's one more bolt right there. Take those two out. Now you can pull this whole intake uh, air box housing right off, wiggle it off the throttle body, and you don't have to take it completely off, but you can set it aside right here. That'll give you enough room to work. I'm going to show you how to replace the more difficult of the two cam sensors, and if you do this one, you can definitely do the easier one, which is on this side of the engine. I'm going to remove the throttle body for this to make more access room. It's held on with four 10 millimeter bolts. Remove all four. Now, if you don't want to do all this, you can definitely reach it from underneath without removing throttle body or intake or anything like that. But this does give you more room. Okay, those are loose, so just remove them the rest of the way. Last one. Make sure your throttle body doesn't fall off. All right, with all those removed, you can pull the throttle body off and you don't have to disconnect these two hoses. You can just set this aside. And right here is your cam sensor that we have to replace. To unplug it, the tab to unlock it is on the back side, so it's a little bit difficult to reach. So I'm gonna use some needle nose pliers, squeeze that tab and wiggle the connector right off. With that disconnected, use a 10 millimeter socket and remove this bolt that holds it in. Now you can wiggle the sensor and pull at the same time. That should help it come off. Uh, let's see if I can help it along with some pliers. There we go. Sometimes if you twist it, the O-ring that seals it up will free up. I'm just using this pry bar to gently, gently walk it out. And there's your sensor. As you can see, it was very corroded around the O-ring. To put in your new one, you can put on a little bit of oil on the seal if you want, so it doesn't go in dry. I'm going to gently remove some of the corrosion that is in here. If yours is like this, just make sure it doesn't get into the engine. Install your new one, press it on there and make sure it slides in all the way. There we go. Push it all the way until it's seated. And now get your bolt, line up the hole, start it on, and make sure it's nice and snug. All right, now it bottomed out. I'm just going to give it like an eighth of a turn. That's good. Don't go too tight because you'll either strip it or break it. Don't forget to plug in the connector. Make sure it clicks. Well, I didn't hear the click, but I did feel it and it's locked in. Now we can put the throttle body back. You technically should replace this gasket, but if yours looks good, uh, mine is not flattened or dry or anything like that, so I can reuse it. Start in your four bolts. And like I said, you don't even have to take all this apart. It just makes it easier. With these bottomed out, torque them to nine foot pounds. Double 
check them. And if you were to replace the passenger side one, it's right here, same procedure. Reconnect your throttle body, make sure it clicks. Now you can slide in your air intake. Make sure this goes over the throttle body all the way, all around. There we go, now it's seated and you can start in your two bolts. And you can snug these up. Perfect. Reconnect your mass airflow sensor. Make sure that clicks and re-secure your wiring harness. Now you can take your air filter housing bring it back to where it belongs and make sure that it clips in on the back here. It has two hooks that have to slide into their groove and secure it up front. Now let's get the engine cover. Before the engine cover goes on, let's tighten up this clamp. That's good right there. It doesn't have to be very tight because they break easily, but you just want to make sure that this is a nice airtight seal. Now you can grab the engine cover and slide it on those two rubber pieces. Put it up here, snug it up with these two nuts. Perfect.